guys, what's up? Allie Marie here. Welcome back to Face Your Phoenix. Yesterday was a big day in the garden. I got everything tilled. I got the new soil added, added the earthworm castings, which is something I want to talk with you about today. I'm just here with my Olipop strawberry vanilla. It's literally like strawberry cream soda in a can. Delicious. But I thought I'd give you a quick tour of my hodgepodge garden because it's a little less formal than what you might see on a typical gardening page because first off, I'm new, but I'm also a hodgepodge cook and I talk about that quite a bit. And and um, I definitely feel like this is just kind of thrown together and I'm like, oh, I'll kind of remember what's where and uh, we'll just, I'll see when things are sprouting and that'll be good. So I want to give you a quick tour on approximately what I did. And after everything, I'll show you, um, I'll, I'll show you the soil and the earthworm castings, like the bags of what I actually added um, and yeah, and all of that. So, but first here's the garden. <laughs> All right, so here's this beauty. It's about a 10 by 20 plot. I have a fence that's coming um, in the next day or two. And um, so this little mound that you see, there's pumpkin seeds there. And it said that it needed an eight by eight space. And I was just like, well, I'll trim it back and see how it does. But over here, we have the little hummingbird uh, pinwheel that my daughter picked out at the store when we got all the plants but here's a goldy zucchini so yellow zucchini and then green zucchini and I have a couple more seeds of zucchini behind there along the fence line we planted six ears of corn or six corn stalks um, back there so those will be sprouting up they're about 12 inches apart and then as we move over let's see I will start over here because I remember over here better so this is a orange snacking pepper and that one's a red pepper and I put the cherry tomatoes on the side on the front here so that the kids could just come over and like grab a snacking pepper grab a cherry tomato whatever and then I have three different types of tomatoes over there as well I think I talked about what they specifically are in a different video but um but then we have a row of beans so we have purple beans that are going to be coming up um oh yeah the watermelon is over there so we put some watermelon seeds there i have two rows of corn that's what's actually like right there right there or not corn carrots rainbow carrots and then let's see so then the beans are here and then we put lettuces kales and spinach and arugula in kind of this section here it's like a big square right here is a bunch of different types of lettuces and then let's see what else did we plant see i don't even know i'm just like blanking and this is why they say that you should label everything that you put in your garden because um for me i'm just like oh whatever pops up we'll just see it as it comes and um i should probably remember better for everything that we did because there were probably eight or nine or 10 different varieties of things that we actually planted. I know that like, so we got peppers pre-started and tomatoes pre-started because those you actually have to start in a greenhouse. So that's why those are plants. I'm authentically trying to remember everything that I planted and I truly just don't. All I know is that I'm supposed to water it every single morning <laughs> to make sure that the seeds can germinate. And the things that I've sown, I can direct sow, right? You're not supposed to like plant carrots in advance. They have to be directly sown into the ground. Um, you know, the zucchini, I got one that was already started just so that we could have some sooner, but those can also just be fully direct sown. That's like the one plant that I did succeed at last year was zucchinis. Um, so we did already have some some of those and then obviously yeah tomato plants they have to be in advance and I actually so Jess over at Roots and Refuge says to put an egg in the hole before you plant your tomato plant in the ground which is what I did because it gives it like a burst of nitrogen and she doesn't know all of the science behind it and but the nitrogen aspect in and of itself makes sense and I was kind of like why not just do it for all the plants but I didn't just the tomatoes um and so yeah but like those have to be pre-started there are certain varieties of fruits and vegetables that have to be started before you plant them in the ground like they have to start in a greenhouse and tomatoes and peppers are one of them brussels sprouts was one that i bought to plant in this garden but it's one that you have to plant in advance so there are no brussels sprouts in my garden this year which i was a little disappointed about because we do really like brussels sprouts and then we were also going to do asparagus beans so i have the little trellises over here with the dragonflies um but as you can see it's just still really weedy and I had to hoe that whole area out um, my husband has never used a hoe before and didn't love it so um so that was all me my husband tried to do a little section and it didn't go very well so um I was just kind of like Neh. and then I tilled it and then I tilled the soil and the earthworm castings into it as well 
So it got tilled three times, I think. And um, yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. Once everything starts sprouting, I'll really be able to give you a good tour on what's in there. But um, over here, and you've seen these before, we have my daughter's peas that are growing, which we also had talked about transplanting over there with the trellises. Um, but they're still here for the time being. A couple of our cucumber plants are looking kind of sad, but those look fine over there. I don't know what's gonna happen with them. I'm, I put some earthworm castings in here too. You can kind of see them right there on the top, the light brown. And then this strawberry plant looks great. My strawberry plant's doing well. And this is another strawberry plant down here in this pot, which is also just doing great. Um, blackberry plant here looking fine. I've just watered it and I added some of those castings. And then over here is my raspberry plant that I accidentally chopped off one of the main stalks when I was just trying to prune it. And that was really disappointing. So um, it's half the size that it was the last time you saw it, but it is still growing, right? My leaves are still alive, so that's good. And um, you know, not bad for a first attempt at a raspberry bush. My quince bush here does produce fruit. Um, I've never actually used quince before, but I have seen bees out here, so it is being pollinated and I might try to get some this year, we'll see. Now that it's kind of pruned up and everything else, we'll see if any of these flowers actually turn to quince. Um, but yeah, so this is all pruned up and ready. It's been flowering for a while, these flowers. They're just so pretty. And if you didn't know, because a lot of people don't, every fruit and vegetable comes from a flower. It always begins as a flower and then turns into something else. Unless it's like a root vegetable, right? But I think even carrots, they flower and that's how you get the seeds and this and that. So um, yeah, my lilac tree over here is blossoming, but they aren't super fragrant. This really needs to be cut down. Um, come here, Are you, do you smell good at all? Yeah, they do, they do, but not like much. You can't smell it across the yard or anything, which I feel like is really, if you have a really good lilac tree, you can smell it around because just the blossoms are so strong and so fragrant. So um, let me run to the trash can real quick and let me see if those bags that I put in the garden are still up there. They were there. So the first thing I want to talk to you about though is the earthworm castings. You don't want to use standard cow manure on a vegetable garden because it can actually absorb into your fruits and vegetables and make them taste really, really bad. Um, if they're on carrots or anything like that, they will absorb into it. Any root vegetable, definitely don't use manure. But if you think about like the tomato plants absorbing cow manure, it gets into the flavor of the vegetables and you can actually get sick, especially when it's a water-based. So earthworm casting, so we talk about worm farming as a way to like give your plants natural nutrients because uh, worms are super healthy. So when I was hoeing up my garden, we were finding dozens of worms just like this soil it has to be so healthy because I already have so many worms living in it and I don't need to worm farm because I just naturally have a ton of worms my, my soil is already naturally really really healthy but that didn't stop me from doing miracle grow garden soil for vegetables and herbs and you know what like both of them probably weren't necessary probably could have gotten standard uh, garden soil but I still wanted to do the I didn't want to go straight compost because it was so expensive it was like $50 a bag whereas this was something closer to 10 and the earthworm castings were $8 a piece so between like all the plants that I bought the seeds the those things I got three bags of each which I probably needed six of each because I doubled the size of the garden kind of last minute um, but between everything that I spent, including the trellises, I want to say that I spent around $300. So we already had the raised potter and I already had the pots and everything like that. But, um, but I want to say that it was right around $300 just to do everything that I showed you back there and what I just talked with you here, which really isn't bad to have homegrown vegetables and fruits. Um, not that many fruits, but we're talking about getting like an apple tree and this or that. So we'll just have to kind of see what comes forward forward and what we continue to add because we were talking about a cherry tree like here hold on on my way there this is Maya I was saying that she was going to be a good guard dog for the garden and uh, sure enough this morning she caught a rabbit you caught a rabbit and you've been eating it all morning haven't you <laughs> it's like gross and good I did a backyard tour on a different video that I didn't upload I don't know I might use footage of it for a before and after type video but um, basically I think chickens have to be more in the sun than this back corner. So if we get chickens, I don't think that we're gonna put them back there. I think I'm gonna get a movable coop that has a run and everything in it. We can only have up to six on our property um, per regulation. So 
Uh, but over here, so this area used to be tiered and it used to be really, really pretty. We've already pulled out a ton, but uh, not this year. I haven't gone back and weeded it all because it's just whatever it is. But we were talking about getting that honey locust tree out of here and then maybe adding a couple cherry trees, like adding steps here in the middle. A couple cherry trees there in the back corner and then maybe an apple tree or something like that. But then recently we learned that cherry trees don't start producing fruit for four to seven years and we're talking about potentially getting more land to move to five to ten acres so that I can have like a goat and a cow maybe. I don't know. I'm like warming up to the idea of a milk cow. I was like, I can just do milk goats, right? I don't know. So more research has to be done there, but we're not quite there yet. Right now I'm just focused on the vegetables um, that I hope to see pop through whatever they might be. Um, I still have the seed packets, so I could if I really wanted to. I think I told you guys in a previous video, I went through the different seed packets that we were planting. And so we planted all of those except for the asparagus beans and the Brussels sprouts. Those were the two that we didn't get to. So, but, um, but yeah, so we were talking about the cherry tree though and we were like, well, maybe we won't. Like we have this quince bush and that's a fruit and we have the couple berry bushes and you know, all those things, the blackberries, the raspberries and the strawberries. And I was even talking about getting some blueberries cause you need acidic soil for blueberries. They need like a five to a six to do well. And I have six, six and a half soil everywhere in my yard. So I'm still on the fence about whether or not we'll do blueberries, but, and then like along the fence line back there would be nice. Cause then you can have this like walking path and, and have it be a homey area but I really don't know how well that would work because it doesn't get very much sun. So I think blueberries do, they are a full shade or full sun plant. So um, yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how well that would work out, but for what it is right now though, no cow manure, only earthworm castings, which is very, very good and like the best food that you can feed to your plants. And it's actually really inexpensive. If you get the type that I got, I got it through Home Depot. But if you get that type, it was, like I said, only like $8 per bag. And I needed three bags for 100 square feet. So, which I really actually got away with three bags over almost 200 square feet, right? I wanted to come further up toward this potter and everything else. I wanted to kind of bring it up along this fence line. Um, but we just figured maybe next year. So, as for now, no fruit yet on anything. I see a little bird poop. Ha! on my little plant there where there it is right there in the center um but yeah so no fruit just poop that's all my garden is right now but it's well on its way and thanks for joining me along the way like i said i mean i am getting more and more passionate about this as 2030 approaches um you know i've been aware of the prediction of a depression since 2008 my dad owns a conveyor company and so we attended he, he like we used to go to conventions and stuff like that and they would have a bunch of professional speakers speak at them so i heard about the prediction for a 2030 uh depression like a long time ago so um so as it's approaching i'm like man now that i have kids i really want to be prepared for this like I need to be aware of what's going on. I want us to be self-sufficient. I need to get, I wanna know how to take care of chickens and know that I can keep them alive and like be able to be that for somebody else too, right? So the idea of only getting to have six chickens seems like not a lot. It's like, I think I read, there was a president that was saying that anyone, like during World War II, every family should have two chickens per person and they would have enough eggs for their family, which is fair because you um the chickens only lay an egg every 24 to 36 hours and that's like a reliable chicken right it's not every chicken's not gonna produce like that which i can do a whole other video on all this stuff i'm studying about chickens like once i'm actually to it and i'm choosing what breeds i'm gonna get and why because i'm in michigan and so it, it all depends on where you're living how harsh your winters are um a bunch of different facets that go into why you would choose a particular breed of chicken over another um whether you're raising them for meat or for eggs or both like all of those different factors are going to come into play for what you would specifically choose for your house but i'm also happy to share that about us like i like my grandpa was a butcher i was raised you know with knowledge of where our meat comes from so i don't think i'd have a problem um processing the chickens but i also don't know if i want to deal with the feathers because that's kind of one of the things that i've talked to people about that do process their own chickens is just that the feathers are really annoying so like i'd be open to processing a goat or you know i mean a cow is a lot of meat but i'd be open to processing like i've processed a, a hind quarter of a deer 
um, for our venison and everything else. And so, you know, I'm fine handling the raw meat and the joints and the bones and the carcasses and all that stuff. But, um, but it's the feathers on chickens that people talk about being really, really difficult. So, so I don't know if I would actually process them myself or not, or find somebody who was used to that. Um, but that would be why and I don't know. So as we get closer to that kind of stuff, I'm happy to do an exclusive video about chickens or like, or goats, you know, even goats have all the different breeds. They can range anywhere from a mini dwarf breed that's, you know, 65 pounds full grown to a full size, like 300 pound goat. And it's just crazy to me how much meat is there. And goat meat is the most consumed meat in the world. I had no clue. I don't even know. But Anyway, so these are dreams that I have that may come to fruition, may not, but all I know right now is that I'm studying it all in preparation for this depression. I want to learn all this stuff now so that I'm not in desperation, you know, in whatever, seven years to be like, oh my gosh, it's time. Like right now is the time. When you look biblically, you look at the seven, uh, you know, Joseph's or Pharaoh's dream that Joseph interpreted the the wheat and then um whatever the other seven was but it was like you're gonna have seven years of uh fruit and flourishing and then you're going to have seven years of famine and so basically you know and the whole thing was you stock up and you prepare for those seven years during these seven years and so for whatever reason the lord has put it on my heart to start preparing you guys and myself for that famine that is predicted that has been predicted for a very long time that we need to start preparing for it now that we have seven years to prepare for the seven years and it's, it's supposed to last around six years when when the depression hits so um so that's why i'm doing this channel that's why i'm doing this and i just am happy to invite you to come along on this journey as we kind of learn like oh how should we organize our garden next year you know how should we organize this next time how what kind of coops are available for chickens that we could have pasture fed chickens and not have to worry about foxes getting them and you know all these different pieces of um you know you want free range or pasture fed like because you can have an enclosed chicken coop and still have pasture fed chickens and have like plenty of space you just have to do it the right way so Anyway, all different pieces and facets of what I'm just really passionate about right now, what I really want to be sharing with you guys, and, and that's the reason for why I'm doing this as well. In particular, like the, the micro farming, micro, you know, mini homesteading stuff, like that in particular, because um, we are all going to have to face this phoenix together when the depression hits. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope it wasn't too uh, discombobulated for you, but welcome to my brain. Welcome to my life. Welcome to my hodgepodge life. I just love it every minute. So, um, God bless you. I look forward to chatting with you again soon and may all of your seeds germinate as well. I look forward to hearing about what you planted in your garden in the comments. Take care.